Welcome back to the Daily Dean. I'm happy to have you here. Today we're going to do some more lighthearted storytelling. I want to talk about running, specifically cuz I'm uh I'm one of the athletes on our local school like cross country and track team, right? So, that has a couple of stories that I want to share. So, one of the big big things that uh I want you to try and experience is a foam roller. A foam roller is this like cylindrical little like tool that's like larger than your thigh. It's really large and it like goes on your calves or your thighs or whatever and you press all your weight down onto it in order to roll out. I have a, a kind of substitute. It's like a, a metal ball and you roll it around on your foot and stuff. So just to give you an image, it kind of looks like this when you're rolling out on a foam roller. Now the feeling when you do it for the first time is excruciating. Like we're talking a breathless kind of like <clears throat> I can't breathe, that kind of thing, right? So when you're doing it, it feels like like um your chest tightens up like 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 this. If you press your hand, if you press your hand against your um your wrist, uh yeah, your wrist and you roll it back and forth, it kind of like imitates the feeling somewhat but if you can a foam roller is like a whole nother experience but that's one of the lesser stories this is actually um more about running so at one of our places where we do our workouts um it's a giant park and there's this loop people tend to walk their dogs around this giant loop and uh, as you're like going by, you know, patting down, it sometimes gets a little intimidating. You don't know whether a dog is going to bite you or like come at you or whatever. And like one of my other teammates has experienced that kind of thing. They've gotten like been in on their like um, their thigh from a dog like when they were passing by and it was like, yo, bro, uh, that's a little scary. So there was this uh, one instance and we were just finishing our workout in the rain no less and we were doing our cool down and we were running by and this dog comes up like un unleashed and uh i remember reading i remember reading online in order to stop a charging dog you're supposed to put out your hand and yell stop in a really loud voice stretching out your foot forward to make yourself I don't know, appear larger and the dog stopped dead in their tracks. If this is me and my teammates, and this is the dog, stop! No, no, no. Stop! And then, no, shoot, I keep messing up. Well, the point is, the dog stopped, and we, like, scurried around it. And I just wish, you know, I wish it was recorded, because now describing it to you, you only get a semblance of the power I was exhibiting in my, like, Full power stop. I was basically uh, like a, a, a registered beast master or something. So that and um, in and like seriously though, it was it was a, a little uh, interesting tidbit. But there's more grosser stories like injuries. Um, I'll leave that silent. Um, other injuries and stuff, but um, more wholesome stuff. So. One of the big things about like uh, cross country are these like invites, these invitationals. And these invitationals can get really, really exciting, right? And like, um, or track also. Invitationals are huge and you get a chance to show off like how much you've grown or improved and get like little shiny, neat little times on your, your scores and whatever and your um, database. And um, it's kind of a lot of pressure. You're racing with like 500 other schools as opposed to like three. That's an exaggeration, but my point is they're huge and you want to be doing your best, especially at the bigger meets where you need to get faster times for like, you know, other things. So me and my teammates were preparing for our race, right? And it was this really important meet. We needed to get a good time. Our mile time needed to be up there in order to compete, right? You know the vibe. We gotta get hard and stuff and stuff like that. So when we're doing when we're doing our like you know warm up routine, I lose track of time. I was the I was one of the people who was keeping track of our watch, and I see like okay guys, we're just about finishing up our you know drills or whatever. And one of my uh, upperclassmen teammates, he's like, hey. Uh, what heat are you guys in? That's like the 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 people you're racing with. Oh, we're in we're in uh, race number seven, right? And he's like, 
race number seven is about to go on right now. And we're like, it, it is? Excuse me? So we like sprint towards the finish line, the starting line. We have our little bibs on with our numbers. And I'm not even on the starting track when the gun goes off. And we're supposed to be on the line. So like, oh, looks like we're already off on the bad, bad foot, right? Like, oh, that kind of makes me feel icky. So... I start off really, really fast, and we're going at it, and I feel bad for my, um, uh, well, you know, my team, uh, mostly because, like, I lost track of time, and it was, like, my fault for that happening, but, like, you know, grinded through it, you gotta go in 100%, and lucky, lucky for me, I got a PR, very... Very daunting though to go through that like gun goes off your heart is racing You're trying to get up there, but you don't know where it's gonna happen You know, you don't know are you going too fast? Are you going too slow? There's no sense of time You don't have a watch you only have your coach and your teammates cheering you on That kind of stuff is really really upsetting and sometimes anxiety inducing so Neat little stories there. Hope you've enjoyed if you'd like to send a little feedback form, I'd appreciate uh, feedback response. I'd appreciate it. It'll be down below. But otherwise, that's it. I uh, enjoy cross country and track. You should probably do it as well. Join, I guess. Thank you. Bye.